Welcome to Tech Whisperers, the podcast that takes you inside the playbook of the world's best digital leaders. This is a show for digital and business leaders who are passionate about learning from the industry shapers and market makers. Join your host, Dan Roberts, as he unpacks the unique stories, leadership philosophies, and answer the call moments that define and differentiate the best leaders of our day. Our goal is to help you gain an edge and move you beyond your comfort zone so that you are driving more impact and value for your team, your company, and your career. Let's get into the show and hear from another amazing Tech Whisperer. Well, welcome back, everybody. I'm Dan Roberts, and excited for you to be part of the uh, the story today, which uh, includes someone who I think is the most interesting man in the world. And you're going to find out why. And that's why you're all listening, right? Because you want to learn. You're curious. You want to learn from these great leaders. And so do you ever wonder where the journey starts for people like this, you know, for these top, these top thinkers? Um, you know, what inspires a young man, our guest today, who was raised by his mom in a small town in India to go pursue a transforming business model type career? Not for the faint of heart, exactly, right? So how do you do that? You embrace the art of the possible. You have a bias for action. You listen and you find inspiration in the why. And you see, and this is his word, you see the opportunity in the possible, not the obstacle in the impossible. Uh, Our guest today ultimately found his way to the U.S. to study and to work and to become an award-winning chief digital officer for a $54 billion Fortune 100 company operating across 200 companies. And of course, this is who else? Sanjeev Sahu, who is the executive vice president, chief digital officer of Ingram Micro. And uh, we're going to learn about his humble beginnings and his incredible leadership journey. So Sanjeev, thank you so much. Uh, I know you haven't been sleeping much lately. You've got some big news we're going to break today, but welcome to uh, Tech Whispers. Thank you, Dan. Uh, it's a privilege uh, to be a part of this, and I have been following and reading some of your articles and podcasts. You know, I'm humbled uh, to be you know, called by you and talk to you. So it's a privilege, and I'm, I'm really excited to be here with you today. Well, feeling is mutual. We're going to have some fun, and and uh, you know, people know I'm pretty maniacal about the research I do, and and I've had so much fun learning about you, talking to a lot of people on different continents. And uh, your story is not an, uh, an easy road. You, you had some pretty big ups, some, some challenges, and uh, we're going to unpack that. Um, but I, I literally found that I kept thinking about that commercial that was on for years. And it was a Dos Equis commercial, not to compare you with beer, very different, but it was the most interesting man in the world commercial. And the, you know, the punchline was, I don't always drink beer, but when I do, I drink Dos Equis. With you, I'm thinking, you know, I might change it up. I don't always digitally transform industries, but when I do, I want Sanjeev Sahu leading the way. What, what do you think? Does that fit? <laughs> I would I would take uh, that compliment any day. I think, yeah, the most interesting man, I don't know about that. But obviously, then the digital transformation is a most used term and my thought process and effort has been to really make an impact and do the best out of it. So anything that I have done work so far, I try to do it with a purpose and value and that's it, you know, and, and, and nothing more than that. So I'm humbled by that, but, and then keep continuing to do great work and good work as much as I can, you know, and to make a difference. Yeah. Well, we're going to learn a lot from you today, Sanjeev. And I mentioned the introduction, fortune 100, $54 billion company, huge, huge company, Ingram micro, but I'm not sure if our audience fully understands and appreciates the impact you have in the tech space and the role within a, a global economy. So maybe just give us a little context. Yeah, Ingram Micro is one of the leading technology distributors in the world. Now, if you think about, as you mentioned, the scale, you know, we partner with one of the biggest technology brands in the world. And we and then we have more than 1,500 such vendors and OEMs with the top technology brands. And what we do is we also reach more than 90% of the human population. Think about that. You know, mm. we have more than 170,000 customers across the globe. And we reach more than 90% of human population, you know, and it's a massive, complex, you know, large organization. 
and we touch one of the most complex and big ecosystems in the world that is technology and technology distribution you know think about a day without ingram micro in the last 43 years we have been providing technology to our resellers our partners and then to our you know users there may not be in a day in life without ingram micro because we have been doing this day in day out connecting and supplying and helping the entire technology distribution ecosystem so that's how big ingram micro is about 54.5 billion dollars revenue large company operations in 59 countries and you know all of, all across the globe you know it's massive it is massive and talk more about your your customer and you know you've got this notion even with that kind of scale that kind of complexity but you're all about personalizing the experience for everyone how can you even say those words in that kind of context that kind of scale yeah it is it is it is an important topic if you look at distribution and technology distribution you know as it was today our partners are resellers isvs who actually you know are buying technology from ingram micro and then we supply to the end users you know ultimately personalization is very difficult because you need to understand what are their appetite for what are their buying patterns what are they quoting for which sector do they serve which categories do they do so it is b2b but is also you know they are catering to a b2c or other parts of the ecosystem mm. and technology changes every day so there is a need for using algorithms to understand first what our customers needs are and personalize an experience but also internally figure out what adds value if we could not add value to that exchange for example we have lots of solutions right technology from individual vendors we need to aggregate them and create meaningful bundles and solutions so that we can push those recommendations to our customers but that's not easy think about technology changing every day if i ask somebody do you know which laptop has the best battery that somebody has to do a research imagine in that world where technology changes every day figuring it out which hardware goes with which software or in a cloud solution it's very difficult so there's a lot of research and process goes in in technology distribution imagine customizing all that with the power of data and machine learning and ai and really creating an experience and what i call dan this is more of a sunday monday blend imagine you are watching a game on a sunday night a football game your feet on the couch you are relaxing you want to have a pizza you press a button and the pizza is so 12 minutes away you are the next stop you love that experience then you are a little more hungry go to instacart buy some more chips some food or you can go to uber eats or doordash or you actually you know buy food and you can track it you know where the driver is coming you enjoy the game you sleep you come next day to buy technology you're manually researching it's a disjointed experience you cannot track your orders real time but the same person our partners have a different monday and a sunday experience hmm our job what we are trying to do is blend this create the same monday experience as they experienced on sunday that is a consumerization it's not about just b2c and b2b it is about blending a human experience becoming an experience driven organization that creates that traction because today digitization is all about experience first and it be, it, it includes personalization recommendation experience everything like that absolutely well, very well said and you know we wanted to get you on the show a couple months ago but i knew you were working on something big you couldn't tell me but i could tell and so we delayed a little bit and i'm really glad that we did and i'd like to unpack this news you've announced recently you know this this new um platform called xvantage and you know it's an ai powered platform right it's uh it's wrapped around your existing systems uh you i mean you've basically created a digital twin and i want you to explain that for people who don't know what that means but and you did this i mean it was a vision to reality in 15 months 
So give us the give us the the high level, and we'll dig down a little bit further. Absolutely. So if you think X Vantage, it's a digital twin. What does it mean? So before you created digital platforms or IT systems and looked at adoption. In my dictionary, innovation first and adoption second does not work anymore. Mm. It's more, we need to create an operating model, a digital operating model that keeps on working in a DNA of the organization, creating an operating spirit to create true tangible value as your technology matures. So if you look at Xvantage, it is really an effort to transform Ingram from a traditional distributor to a platform company. And why cannot we be the platform company? Because we are connecting the OEMs and the vendors with our partners. But we needed product, data, network, and that's what we're focusing on. That was a concept to actually really create a digital twin, such a way that everything that you can do with Ingram Micro today, you could do with this platform. So it's a business model transformation, not another IT tool and another way for the customers. There's no opt-in, opt-out. This is our way to drive customer experience. So with that concept, we actually started working on it, you know, powered by some of our Cloud Blue and other technologies. But we started with experience, a lot of design thinking. How do we create a very differentiated customer or partner experience? How do we stitch to create a frictionless experience for our partners? A very different experience, which is not easy because you have to take a lot of complexity out in the back end, it's data, different systems, global countries. So we worked as a team, we brought in some of really good talent from Amazon, uh, Meta, and we also paired with our existing talent, worked together, we formed the DG operations group so that we have DG tech and DG ops, both working together at, at tandem. So everything was the knowledge that you had with the operating people uh, who had so many years of knowledge, what works and doesn't work. And the people who came from outside match together. So I call it inside out matched with outside in. That's pretty mm. important because you cannot actually do one or the other. So you match them together. We And in a few months, we piloted the platform in US and Germany. And then in September, we actually announced the full launch, the platform in September uh, in US and Germany. Now we went live in Canada. And it's not stopping. We are going across all the geographies in next few months and till early next year. But there are two parts. Xvantage, we are continuing two-week sprints to add functionality more and more and more to the platform. And we are also you know, rolling out to all our countries. So the platform is completely AI-based, self-learning. We have built a real-time data mesh to take out complete complexity in the backend. And we have got really good feedback you know, from our, our partners, you know, you know, it doesn't require any training. You know, it is out of the box. Many, many years of legacy replaced by a platform built in a few months. So really proud of what the team has built. Yeah, yeah. I. It's just so exciting. And the idea of inside out, outside in, and uh, you're, you're transforming at the same time performing. And that's a really hard balance. Take us inside the executive C-suite there as you're going through this journey. I know you've worked closely with your CEO, Paul Bay. You work close, closely with your executive peers. I mean, it really, it's it's not, you, you can't do this on your own, right? You had to get the support of your, your colleagues for this big, bold vision. Uh, talk about that. It is an extremely, extremely important topic, Dan. You know, I think you cannot really drive such massive transformation, change business for so many years if you do not have one the authority and the empowerment also support from uh, the CEO and the board. You know, so we, I, I talk to Paul multiple times a day. We are completely aligned. You know, even when I joined Ingram, you know, I was we talked, and it's one of the reasons I joined Ingram. You know, it was really 
amazing conversation and you know he always says so far he, do he doesn't tell me no you know so you know whatever we need we partner together we work together you know fully support and keep him informed so it's very very important to have that trust relationship with your ceo because you're not really doing it isolation x vantage is one of the top priorities of the company it is not a shiny technology platform built just for pr it is what we are doing is really working hard to change the entire strategy of the company so it is very important even with uh, the peers you know the presidents you know we talk multiple times uh, we we work with them i i i connect with them it is very important as a leader for transformation dan to be a storyteller to articulate the vision and then create conviction so vision without conviction will not work and conviction also has to be matched with credibility so it is called making ground and taking ground you do if you do a well then you get credibility for a plus b if you do a plus b then you get to a plus b plus c that is called incremental transformation so the best transformations are not talked about oh we are transforming i call it incremental transformation prove that you can do small steps have a big vision and execute small i call it think big execute small and fail fast so keep on by doing that and being able to be vulnerable to make sure that you admit where you could do better and admit your mistakes and and take everybody's perspective is very important to be in a c suite and other thing i also say is that it is very important to be compassionate compassion is not a sign of weakness it is strength ingram micro we had we are working to a lot of technologies but sometimes this industry when you see a lot of manual nature of the business you have to be compassionate about why it is today yes everything can be automated but that's not the goal why be compassionate so execute with passion but communicate with compassion that works a lot put yourself in their shoes be empathetic and have the message how can we do better so that's those are some of the things then and being able to be both a business leader and a digital leader helps a lot you have to understand the business and follow the money that's that's incredible i love these uh sanjeevisms these teachings and hit me with that again uh vision conviction and credibility just give me give me the high level again one more time yes vision creates conviction and then credibility because and then credibility you have to make ground take ground and keep on doing it and then you have to follow up with proper communication with compassion so those are the four things powerful you know um a big shout out to marie rourke who helped us uh, uh pull this together shape it and as you were going through this she would share with me i don't know when sanjeev sleeps you've been on a tear for for months right and so how do you keep your energy high so you can continue to be energizing and inspiring for your people so i have been mostly like that dan all my career you know so first of all i think you have to figure out the purpose and why in the job there's a difference between a job a career and a passion and if you follow your passion then that keeps you going like it is like an enigma you know changing an industry transforming a business when few employees sometimes come in walk in and say hey are you sanji bias so excited about exvantage we are so excited to be part of it this is what ingram agre all these impacts inspirations it makes you feel great that we are doing something that 30000 employees can actually benefit we can doing something that is putting ingram micro in the map and once you are into it then you forget everything you forget that it's a job then it becomes a passion it becomes something that you live breathe sleep eat every single day its vantage becomes your life and you love it and when you love something you haven't worked a single day so it's not about working hard it's about enjoying when you work then you don't look at the you know work hard work 
So, and then I talked about the whole purpose, right? I have few checklists, like every time I figure out every night, what are the things I really suck at or I'm bad at? And what can I improve? And you keep on improving every single day. I'm a very, very hard critic of my own self. Very frequently, I fire myself and rehire myself over a weekend. Mm. Because if you do the same job, same way, then you really do not improve. That makes you complacent. You should be happy and proud about what you did, but not complacent because complacent kills you. So constantly firing yourself and rehiring yourself periodically gives you a better perspective. And then connecting with people. I love listening to employees, driving them, pushing them. Sometimes my employees do not know what they can do. They said, oh, we can only do this much. Pushing them to create excitement, that really drives me. So that is what keeps me going. It's not about the hard work. I'll never come and say, oh, I'm really working so hard. I'm enjoying it. Mm. How often do you get a chance to actually touch the largest technology ecosystem and impact 90% of the population of the world and build a platform that can change such a massive scale? Not often. Right. So that, that's when a job becomes a passion. And if your job becomes a passion and enigma and you enjoy it, then you don't count the number of hours you sleep or what you do. You just love what you do. And if you love what you do, you keep going. Yeah. So Sanjeev, I'm going to fire myself this weekend. And I'm going to challenge our listeners all over the world to do the same thing. Uh, but let's not leave it there. What's the thought process? Like, how do you go through that mindset, that process of rehiring yourself? What's the justification? Because I'm not sure if I'd rehire myself. So help me, help me rehire myself on Monday. The justification is that figuring out what you have done good and what can be better, have a different outlook, different perspective, and think about the areas that you could improve and come with a different perspective on Monday. So if you look at on the same glass, sometimes the same object looks different from different angles. So think about your blind spots, ask for feedback, and then come back on Monday with try to fix your blind spots because we all can do better. I can do thousand things better every day. I have many ups and downs, failures. We all learn every single day. But if we become stagnant, then we don't learn. Talking to your employees and also, hey, what can you think I can do better? You know, or your peers. So if you take all that feedback and just isolate yourself and think, how can I add more value to what I'm doing to the organization? What are my blind spots? What are the things I can improve on? It's just a few hours of exercise. It's like meditation. You come back, you will have a completely different perspective. You know, And, and the most important thing, you know, Dan, is attitude is very important. You know, It's a mindset and the spirit. A lot of people ask me, what is digital transformation? I always say it's a spirit. It's a mindset. That is the most important thing for any such transformations to work because skills can be taught. You can learn many things, but mindset kills most organizations they can transform. Same with leadership, Dan. You know, when, the, when we think that we know everything and what got us here will get us there, it's not going to work. We need to learn every single day. If technology is changing every single day, the world is changing every single day, why should we keep our leadership the same every single day? We need to change. We need to conform. So that is what we would do over a weekend. So I love the mindset on mindsets. And you've mentioned a couple of times uh, the word spirit, the spirit of the spirit of transformation. Tell us about what that what that means to you. Mindset is very important. The spirit is important. I'll tell you why. Many times human minds focus on the fear of losing 100 versus the gain of losing, uh, gaining $150 because our minds are risk averse. As leaders, we focus on 40% chance of failure versus 60% chance of success. But keep in mind, there is no safe transformation. There is no safe innovation. It is only a varying degree of risk 
and reward. The balance is on our control. But the mindset to actually take some risk to learn comes with attitude. And it comes with a spirit of entrepreneurship, spirit of innovation. Organizations don't need to hire innovators or entrepreneurs then. They need to hire people with entrepreneurial spirit and innovative spirit. The best organization are the one who adopt this as a spirit and a mindset. It's like digital fitness. Even personal fitness is a lifestyle or, a, or a ongoing, right? It's not starts and ends. You cannot say I was fit from this year to this year and then I stopped being fit. You have to be fit all the time. Similarly, digital organizations are fit, digitally fit all the time. And the organizations who have the spirit of embracing change, eliminating fear, fail fast, creating a mindset of pushing the limits, keep challenging your limits, keep focusing on the customer experience, becoming an experience-driven organization. That's where the mindset comes. And this transformations and mindset is about human. Digital transformation, the most important aspect is human. It's not about technology. Our employees are human. Our partners are human. Our vendors are human. They are making decisions. Today, employee experience is customer experience. If your employees don't adopt and use your platform, do you think your customers will? No way. So this human in the organization have to be changed by the spirit, focusing on the art of possible, being empathetic, compassionate, and the art of storytelling. This is the important mindset about, let's try before we give up. Many times we try, don't try at all. So the risk of not trying and failing is so much more worse than trying and failing. What's the worst can happen? We try it, but fail, but fail fast. So that is the spirit and mindset in organizations because organizations have two kinds of gaps, performance gap and opportunity gap. Performance mm. is easier to fix, right? Your PNL revenue. But the opportunity gap is where organizations fail. 61% of Fortune 500 have disappeared from inception. Why? Because they couldn't see the opportunity gap. Market changed. Competition came. And organizations which have this DNA and spirit of constant innovation, transformation, creating that operating model I talked about, DGOps, that's how you succeed. So good. And, you know, it warms my heart. We were the company that founded the term developing the human side of technology in 1984. Long time ago, before we recognized humans. And, and I, I love the fact that you point out that the people that do the work, the people that we serve, our customers, right, our partners, it's, uh, it's all about the human side. Um, thank you for talking about fear in that way. You know, you complacency versus, you know, you described an environment of of energy, of excitement, of, of momentum. And I've got to believe that's a lot more fun to be in that environment and uh, much more energizing, you know, take, take the ground, you know, win, win a little bit every day. Take us, you know, we've got a lot of people that would love your perspective on the architecture of, of, of uh, how you did this, how you went about this. Maybe be, and you're a very polite person, so I'm going to ask you maybe to be a little uncomfortable, maybe a little provocative, where most go wrong right at the start, right? The whole architecture, the, what you say, the orchestration of all this. Can you can you speak to that in a little provocative way? And then how did you come at it? Yeah, I think one of the things, Dan, not being impolite, but a little bit of how I approach is, till date, I remember the database normalization forms or coding architecture because I've, I've learned to focus on why from anything I learned from my childhood. I write a piece of code, why? If mm. you focus on why, then your concepts stay for a long time. And you focus on the business acumen, then you actually connect your technology to your business. That's, and I call it three quotients. You know, we call it EQ, CQ, and IQ. Like, CQ is a competency quotient where you know your technology or whatever you're good at. Your IQ is not IQ, it's a connecting the dots 
and your EQ is emotional quotient, like how you collaborate with the team. Now, what happens then many times, technology professionals drive architecture for the sake of building shiny technology. Let's modernize our systems. Let's build a data lake. Let's create API. Let's create microservices. It's all good, but we don't start with the customer experience, right? What is the business? Where is the money? And then don't we don't bring in the operations and business right at the start. So what happens when you build technology, knowing technology, then you're not pushing the art of possible. Contrarily, your architecture should be always ready for pivoting business models, be giving you infinite scale and being able to move fast because today time is of essence. You cannot have an innovation idea for 18 months. You'll be disrupted. You have to move fast. So when you architect, few things. One, focus on decoupling. Decoupling your legacy such a way that you create abstractions in every layer, in the data layer, in your business logic layer, in your experience layer, and use API to chain them. It's very important. Decoupling is very important. Second, you cannot solve rationalizing legacy at the same time as building platforms. That's not going to happen because if you touch system of records at the same time, you're trying to create the system of cognitive intelligence and engagement, that will be a disaster because everybody wants to do everything. At the same time, if you try to modernize, modernize in pieces, such a way that it ties to the overall architecture of the decoupling and abstraction I talked about. For example, a lot of people think moving to cloud will solve all our problems. That's completely wrong. You have to move to cloud for what? Now, let's say you are aggregating data across ERPs. You want to build a harmonized layer on the cloud with data lake, with a real-time data lake or data mesh. You want to create purposive data stores. That makes sense to move on the cloud, and then you can get that computing power, real-time replication. And, and then on top of that, you can actually create and scale your reads. So how you scale your read transactions versus write, how you decouple your data layer with your engine layer, how you architect your engines to be completely headless, they are autonomous, how you stitch them together with API or data distribution, like, like real-time caching or a uh, you know, message bus, put them together with event structure. These are very, very important. It has to be really thought through. This is the foundation of the company. And then take pieces that move to your overall direction, but you move keeping on customer. You start with experience first. And in the back end, keep on improving, improving. Don't wait. If you wait, it takes too long. So if you have mm -hmm. the decoupling, you can actually work on every layer in a different speed, but still you can move together at the same front. That is very important. Don't do cloud for the sake of cloud. Don't do API for the sake of API. But create on how do you harmonize, aggregate in a layer that can decouple my legacy. How can I make my engines so that tomorrow I add, a, add another engine to a different data? I don't have to make my changes. How can I create my experience where I can change my experience without touching them? That architecture is very important. So that orchestration of that to support the business model to importance. So tomorrow, imagine the way things are changing. Every company is changing business model. If we, look, we live in a world, Dan, to be a platform or successful, we need multiple monetization models. We need infinite networks. We need to pivot business models. If we have monolithic code or architecture doesn't support, then you won't be able to support that. And then having this whole digital platform in isolation doesn't work. Because yeah, it's, it's, it's very shiny. It looks good. It's a lot of, but how much is actually creating value? That's why more than 80% of these transformations fail. There's no connection with business. The architecture, thought process, the speed of modernization doesn't match the speed of value creation. It's very important. I repeat, the speed of modernization doesn't match the speed of value creation. You have to match those speeds. That's why I come back to creating that operating model, which is very thoughtfully orchestrated with the foundation blocks. You know, even more powerful when people recognize this is not your first rodeo. You've done this before, other companies, other industries, 
And so I really want to I want people to take heed of that. And, you know, as we fire our health, ourselves this weekend, think about these important points. Think about, so it's, uh, it's the CQ, which is the competency quotient. It's the IQ, which is not what we think. It's the ability to connect the dots, which those are very interesting uh, delineation there. And then the EQ, which is the more the, uh, the, the emotional, the people side of it. So great, great insights. Uh, Sanjeev, one of the things we did, we did a little detective work to find somebody uh, interesting to come and be the mystery questioner. So I'd love for you to, uh, to listen and uh, tell us who this is and then have some fun with, with the question. So let's listen to the question. So Sanjeev, I've known you for years and the most amazing thing that I've observed is the fact that despite whatever condition you're in and despite you know the cards that are dealt to you, you manage to make it work. And we call that MacGyvering it out. What's the secret sauce behind doing that? I love that. I've never heard that term before, MacGyvering it out. So who is that, Sanjeev? I think it sounds like Ray. The voice sounds like Ray. Is it Ray Wang? That's right. Ray Wang, good, good call. And he has uh, such a good voice. He's like a radio jockey, you know, like video jokes. I can I recognize his voice, you know. Ray is a, a rock star, right? I mean, he runs constellation research. So all those innovators work with him. He's got books, he's got Disrupt yeah. TV, which I think you're on a great uh, podcast. You you see him on TV all the time. So yeah. have some fun with that with Ray's question. Yeah, it's a very interesting question. So I'll go back to my childhood uh, to answer that question. So I was born in very humble beginnings in India. And when I was very young, uh, I lost my father. And when I lost my father, I had asked my mom uh, one question. And that day, my father died. Was, I remember on the New Year Day, I had asked my mom, uh, so can I go and play with my friends? And my mom said, you will never be able to see your father again. So go and see him. And I saw how much she was broken down. I was very young to even understand all that. And then what I observed was suddenly life changed. Financial conditions were not the same. A single woman bringing kids up, it's not the same. So we learned to actually be happy and manage with whatever we have. That's the first cards were dealt to me by God. And we, I learned to actually manage, change myself, come out of it because I was the elder son on the family. I had to take responsibilities when I was very young. And that matured me. And then observing uh, my mother, I learned entrepreneurship. What is entrepreneurship? It is making every challenge an opportunity, focusing on being optimistic, keep being frugal and judicious about what you spend. But most importantly, you have to always balance with whatever you have. Doesn't matter $60 a month, you have to live life, but be happy. And that's the big lesson. Because you got to be happy and come out of what is being dealt to you. And that taught me a lot of lesson to be not bogged down by what is given not always complain, but try to always make an impact. Because if you take even a dollar in your job, you need to do it well and not slack. Because what you think as given is not actually given to many people in the world who even struggle for basic rights. So as I grew in my career, I have learned that you cannot always get the best. Everywhere there is some challenges, problems. And I can, I mean, no mean perfects. I have made my mistakes. I have fallen down many times. I've learned from it. I'm a better person every day than I was before because we learn over time as a human being. But what is very important is that always figure out what you have given, make the most out of it. Life is short. We have to live as if there is no tomorrow. At the same time, do things as if there is tomorrow. So optimize your pros and minimize your cons. That's what is the principle. So when, we, when Ray says you have always dealt with the cards, if it is a startup with low budget or a bigger company with different challenges to many, many different scenarios, you have to learn and not give up. 
this is very easy to give up, very difficult to actually continue. So that's what I would say is the only secret that I would have. I try not to give up. I keep pushing, 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 trying, you know, that's all. And yes, even after that you failed, it's okay. But in my heart, I feel that I have tried because your conscience to yourself is what matters the most. We are not perfect. We made mistakes. We learn. But if you have a conscience that, hey, I have tried my best, that's all it takes. That's the only secret I'll say that. So good. You know, Ray, thank you for taking the time. He was actually, we caught up with him. He was in Vegas. He had just done a big keynote. He had a bunch of meetings. And he's like, yeah, I'll do this for Sanjeev. Uh, absolutely. So uh, he was Thanks. glad to, to do that, to honor you in that way. Great question. And, you know, one, uh, before we get to the, uh, the Tech for Good uh, scholarship, I, I want to ask you, you talk a lot about impact. You talk a lot about value. You even describe your role chief digital officer, but sometimes you refer to it as chief value officer. So tell us about that. What's the mindset behind that? I think most of the times, Dan, digital transformation is thought about as technology. If you ask all these transformations, which most of them feel, they start with a lot of interest, you know, good things, a lot of press and PR, then they fizzle down. Because you need to really focus on value. And value is the single most important thing for any organization. I think all CXOs should be CVOs, chief value officer. Because we should, if you look at the lens of value, then everything will fall, uh, come across. Like value for your customers, value for your employees, value for your you know, vendors. So you have to look at the lens of value. So every single initiative that you do Keep value in mind. And if, if it is not working, switch. I always tell that operation is successful, but the patient died. It's a common term, right? Many times we start delivering checklist. We modernized, we built a system, but we don't deliver a smile or value. Right. So we need to bring in value to this ecosystem. That's why the whole operating and ops is important. Understand where the money is, where the value is. How can we expand my operating income? How can I in increase organic revenue? Where is the customer retention? Where is the value? If you start thinking about value, the decisions you make will be very different. Don't celebrate the launch of a platform. Celebrate how you changed your customer's experience to the platform, how you contribute to the books of your company. That's a mind shift change. Most digital leaders or tech leaders focus on, did you know that we have so many algorithms working or we switched this legacy to cloud? It's all great, but why? Right, back to the why. How much value did it drive? Did it improve your customer? Retention, satisfaction, did increase revenue, operating income. That's where we should start. Keep in mind, we start with a business value and with business value. Fit technology in between. Don't start with technology. That's a great, that's a great point. And uh and and in my rehiring, I'm gonna I'm gonna remind myself of that this weekend, Sanji. But you know, the value, you know, outside in, inside out, and that's really good. Well, speaking of value, you know, we are. Very passionate here, like you, in terms of doing tech for good. And, you know, we've got this incredible opportunity where we are donating $125,000 of scholarships to nonprofits. And uh, you have the ability today to gift a seat in our nine month IT leadership development program to one of the nonprofits that you and Ingram Micro support. So, is there somebody that comes to mind who you think would really be able to benefit, get some value from that? Absolutely. I think last year, uh, our marketing leader, Jen and I, invited me to this event. You know, I thought it was a girl thing. It was a very noble cause. And I saw what they're doing for the community and, and really promoting girls you know, uh, in a very, very unique way and support them. So I would like to really donate uh, this Tech for Good to Girls Inc. and make sure that somebody really comes out of this and becomes an amazing technologist and focuses on value. You know, so that's on what value. Yes, for you know, become the next great chief digital officer focusing on value from this from Girls Inc. I would love that. You know, so you know that will be really great. 
That's fantastic. Girls Inc. Uh, can't wait to uh, get them plugged in. And you'll appreciate this, Sanjeev. The last uh, workshop that they go through that program is around how do we do a better job of marketing IT's value? How do we, we define that as creating an awareness of IT's value, creating awareness of digital value. So perfect uh, you know, alignment to your vision and your success story. And Unfortunately, we're kind of at the end of our, our time for the podcast, Angie, but good news. People know this, that next week we're going to be posting a blog with you on CIO.com. And so I want people to tune into that. And we're going to dig in with your permission. I want to go into more of your success pillars for digital transformation. I want to talk about one of your other mantras, which is being your own CEO in everything you do, going back to those entrepreneurial roots. and then. The whole idea of account, taking accountability, driving value, and really feeling proud every day of the value that you deliver. So if you're game, we'll have some fun with that. We'll deliver some more value. And uh, Sanjeev, thanks so much. Congratulations on Exvantage and this momentum that you're building, this energy. And uh, taking time out. I know you're not sleeping much, but you look you look amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. It's really an exciting time to be at Ingram Micro. You know what we are doing, the teams are doing. Every day we hear some of the success stories, the teams. Just a fascinating time to be in this company. So that keeps me going. Yes, I will try to sleep more, you know, and take rest. But we're not going to rest till we actually make advantage. You know, really transform this industry. You know, and that's why we're here for. That's our purpose. That's our why, and to really improve the experience for our partners and our vendors. And we will not stop, you know, to do that. So it's, it's exciting. It is really exciting. And thank you for having me here to share our story. I'm really, truly humbled and honored. And if this can inspire any leader, any upcoming leader, or even anybody, that's worth it. You know, again, we, we all keep learning today. And if there's any suggestions for me to improve or do better, I will take it every day. So thank you, Dan, for having me here. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjeev. I am truly inspired. I know you've inspired many, many great lessons, many great Sanjeevisms. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. And until next time, you all stay well. Developing a robust pipeline of future ready IT leaders who know how to show up and engage differently is paramount to success today. If you would like to learn more about the Tech LX Leadership Development Program that Dan talks about in the podcast, we invite you to visit techwhispers.net. Equip your workforce with a new mindset and skill set needed to maximize impact, increase engagement, and build a world-class talent magnet brand. You've been listening to Tech Whispers, inside the playbook of the best digital leaders, a Woolet and Associates podcast. Keep connected with us by subscribing to the show in your favorite podcast player. If you like what you've heard, please rate the show as this helps us connect the world's best digital leaders with those who aspire to learn, grow, and thrive in this amazing profession. Thanks for listening. Until next time.